My name is Sophie Pierre. I'm a member of the Kudunaka Nation, uh, the St. Mary's Indian Band. That is in the southeast Kootenays of British Columbia, around Cranbrook, is where my community is. And I worked in my community for many years as um, the elected chief. I was on council for 30 years, 26 of those years as chief. I spent nine years in the St. Eugene Residential School that is just outside of Cranbrook. And the residential school is actually very close to my own community. I uh, entered the residential school when I was six years old and I stayed there till I was 15. When I left the residential school at the age of 15, I returned home to a situation where my parents were both alcoholics and um, there were, they were drinking when I returned home. But the next day when my mother realized that I had returned home at the age of 15, that I'd been sent home, it made a big impact on her life. And um, from that day forward, she never had another drink. She uh, realized that she needed to provide for me. And that's what changed her life around. I, later on in life, later on in, in years, when, when she got older, I asked her many times why she had to wait so long. Why couldn't she have figured that out when I was six years old or 10 years old and taken me away from the residential school? But um, that was just something that our people were put through and they felt that their children were taken away from them, that that's just the way things happened. That, of course, left a big impact on our entire nation. And just like many other Aboriginal nations and Aboriginal communities, the impact of the residential school is intergenerational. And although our residential school closed down in 1970, there are still impacts today. We have many young families that have no parents, no, um, no grandparents, no great-grandparents. And that is part of that intergenerational effect. There's um, many of our young people that do not understand the language and the culture the way that my generation understands it and, and is able to still use our language and our culture. And again, that's an intergenerational effect because just like all other residential schools in the country, the use of the Aboriginal language was totally forbidden. We were punished quite severely for speaking our language. I was fortunate because when I left residential school for the summer, the two months in the summer, because my parents were alcoholics and were not able to care for me, I would spend the time with my grandmother and she didn't speak any English. So I went from 10 months of speaking no Ktunaka to two months of speaking total Ktunaka. So I was able to retain my language that way. And many of the um, people of my generation that had grandparents um, are in the same situation. That's how we were able to retain the language. But the intergenerational effect of that, of being punished for doing something like speaking your language, has a tremendous impact. And so the people of my generation, we did not pass that language on to our children. Um, you're just, you have that still remember that the um, type of punishment that you would get and you didn't want that for your children so because of this um, loss of our of our language and the, the not the total loss but it was it's hard to pass it on and the the culture of the Kturnacha, as is for all aboriginal cultures is so the language is so fundamental to maintaining your culture that it's difficult to pass that on, pass on the culture without the language. And in our community, there was, um, we started recognizing, trying to deal with this many, many years ago when I first became chief. And we were having a, a community meeting where there was a lot of discussion around why we had lost, why there was such a, um, a loss of language and culture. 
and a lot of people of my generation were saying, well, it was because of the residential school. And where my community is, our, where our community hall is that we were meeting in, it's directly across the road from the former residential school. So people were pointing to that saying, it's because, you know, over there, the, the residential school is what caused us to lose our language and culture. There was um, an incredible elder in our community. Her name was Mary Paul. And she told us that um, we only lost something if we didn't, when, when, when we dropped it, if we didn't go back and pick it up. She said that if we felt we had lost so much at that former residential school, that it was up to us to go back in there and get it. That we would truly have lost it if we did not pick it up again. For a long time we didn't understand what she meant, but we started getting um, the plan into place for turning that residential school and the lands around it into a business opportunity for our nation. And that's when we started to understand what she meant. She said that if she, you know, we thought that we had lost so much in there that we had to go back in and get it. So she was telling us it was our choice. How we dealt with the intergenerational effects of the residential school, that's our choice. We can choose to be victims of that or we can make a choice to change it for ourselves. And as the Kutunaka Nation, we made the choice to change that, that history. And it was, um, was a very challenging, it was difficult, difficult to convince people, difficult to convince investors and government, our own people. It was difficult to convince our own people that we should be taking that former residential school, the building, because it's a beautiful building. Take that building, the lands around it, and develop it into an economic enterprise that will bring prosperity to our people. So in other words, taking something that's so negative in our past and turning it into something positive for our future. And that's what we did as a Tunaka Nation. We now have a four and a half star resort at the former residential school where I spent nine years. And I think it's just fantastic. Can I ask a question? How did youth in your community react to this transformation? When we were going through the planning phase, it was the youth really that carried it. Because people of my generation, there were a lot of, of um, th there was a lot of sort of just we didn't believe in ourselves. We did not believe that we could do something like this. Some of our people thought that we should just knock the building down because it had such a bad, it left such bad memories. It, it, it hurt people. Like, I mean, we had people saying that. Every time I come by here and I see that building, I hurt. I remember what it was like in there. So we thought, just knocking the building down doesn't really address that. It doesn't help us move forward. But if you could go by, and instead of seeing it as, an, as a run-down old building, and that's what was happening, it was becoming very, um, um, I mean, it was just falling apart. And it would have, if we hadn't um, done something with it, eventually we would have had to knock it down. But what has that really done? How has that helped people to heal? How does that help? the next generations to understand what their parents and grandparents went through and to understand why they're where they're at and they'd be able to move forward. So by taking this on as a, I don't know, as a healing journey for ourselves and taking total control of that and deciding, and it was our people that decided that we actually had votes in our community to decide to go ahead with this business opportunity. And then to, to just move forward and transform that former residential school from being a residential school to now when you walk in, it is a beautiful hotel. And the young people today, my grandchildren today, they talk about the hotel. They don't even refer to it as a former residential school. Now that's not to say that it's not in their minds or they're not gonna know the history. They know the history, but for them, it's something for the future. Knowing what the past, knowing what it was in the past, 
but it's important to concentrate on the future, not to be always in that place of hurting, to be in that place of, you know, of having a real positive outlook about where, where you're able to go to move forward. And I think really that's, that's the legacy that we have to deal with, is do we stay in that place of having the hurt that many of my generation talk about? Do we stay there or do we figure out a way that we can, with the next generation and our grandchildren and great-grandchildren, to move forward? Do we make that a conscious choice to move forward? 